So you've been knitting along on your mitten, doing the decreases the way we discussed, until when you try your mitten on, the tip gets right to the top of your fingers and you've ended with a plain knit round. So now what I want you to do is push your needle tips right to here. And I want you to notice you do have some stitches left at the top of your mitten and that's going to form the nice rounded top when you've joined the stitches with the Kitchener stitch. And that's kind of nice. It's not all pointy and odd looking. Okay? So you push your needle tips like this because that's the way you'll be able to work your Kitchener stitch effectively. Alright, and now I'm going to cut a relatively long bit of yarn because I start the weaving of my Kitchener stitch very, very loosely and I'll show that to you. And the way to do that is to be sure you give yourself plenty of yarn to play around with while you're weaving. So anyway, cut that. I have a nice blunt needle. This one has a little bit of a curve to it, but you can use a plain straight needle as long as it's blunt on the tip. All right, now if you'll remember, I have a little rhyme that will help you remember the repeats when you are doing a Kitchener stitch. And here's the thing. Your yarn should be coming from the back needle that's your double check and you have to remember to always take the yarn back and forth underneath your needles. You never want to go over the top. So I'm going to go underneath the front needle and here's your rhyme. Your rhyme is to knit off, so you'll knit the stitch and take it off the needle tip and then you'll go as if to purl, purl through. So in the front it's knit off, purl through, and then I pull the yarn very, very loosely, okay? I go under my needle tip, and in the back, I purl off, so I slip the stitch as if to purl, slip it off the needle tip, and I knit on, which means that stitch stays on the needle tip even though I am slipping through as if to knit. Again, I pull my yarn very, very loose, and I go back and see, I go knit off in the front, and then I go purl through, that stitch stays on, and in the back, I go purl through, uh, purl off, and knit through. So the rhyme is knit off, purl through, purl off, knit through, okay? I'm gonna come back once I get to the last couple of stitches. And again, every single time it's very important that you don't pull this yarn up tight. And one way I keep myself from doing that is I keep my finger right between the two needles and that way it's, it's basically impossible for me to, tool, to pull the yarn up tightly. I'm gonna come back later with a crochet hook and tidy up that join. It's much easier to do if you have the stitches loose. Okay, I'll get right back to you. So I have done my little Kitchener stitching until I'm down to the last two on the front and the back of the needles. So I just wanted to show you, you're going to knit through, you know, knit off, purl through, and you're gonna be left with just one stitch. And again, look how sloppy all this is. Don't panic, that's exactly what you want. And then I'm going to Purl off and knit through the last one and knit through. And this is the part that just, you know, sometimes you're thinking, okay, I'm completely confused because I only have one stitch left and I'm supposed to be doing two motions and now what do I do? It's okay. You just act as though there was a second stitch and you go knit off, no problem. And then you go to the back and you do purl off, no problem. Needles are completely gone. Purl your yarn through. Okay, now, you have a choice. I oftentimes don't use a crochet hook for this next part simply because I never seem to have one with me when I'm closing the toes of a sock or anything. So, it doesn't really matter. This is very, very loose. What you do is whether it's a sock or whether it's the top of your mitten, you 
put your hand in there and see, look, 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 all messy, messy. And at the first part, the end opposite of where you've got your nice long tail, you find the very, very first kind of stitch that you did there. See, you can see where I'm kind of pulling and there it is, okay? So you kind of pull that, then you move on and you go to the next one. And sometimes you'll pull on the wrong one and you just fix that. See, there we go, that's not that, there we go. Now I tend to pull when I'm doing the Kitchener, sti Kitchener stitch a little tighter than maybe the whole body of stitches just because this is gonna get a lot of stress and I just assume it'd be tight. So I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna kind of pull OC and pull that one really tight. And I tend to move this out of my way so I can see where, see right there, pull on that and you can tell it's gonna pull from there and it's gonna pull that. And so this is the loop that needs to be pulled tightly. So I send it to the back and it makes it a lot easier for me to see. Uh, see when it starts shrinking, that means I grab the right one. Let's say this is in the back and I pull on, let's say this strand. See, notice how the one we wanna shrink isn't shrinking. But if I go in here and pull on this one, look, it starts shrinking. So all you want to do is work your way all the way to the end. And see, I do keep that a little tighter then, and you can go back and even make it even more tight if you want. And I work my way along until I completely tightened up all of these stitches, leaving a very, very long tail. I trim the tail up a bit so it's not crazy long. And then I just weave in that end and you will have your mitten top all nice and smooth like the end of a toe. Okay, I'll get back to you and show you how it looks when it's completely Kitchener stitched and ready to go. So see, after the Kitchener stitch, all nice and smooth at the top. These little blurbs here will block out when you've washed your mitten and you can kind of do some blocking and shaping. So the next time we get together, we're gonna to talk about finishing off both of the thumbs, either the gusset or the afterthought thumb, depending on which one you chose to do. So we'll get back, we're gonna finish off the thumbs and then you will have your mittens.